Good evening. I'm Tyler Krieger. And I'm Eliana Moreno. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. Fans of all ages cheer on the Badgers. We'll have full coverage of Bucky's run to the national championship. Some ketchup. It's time to dust off the grill and put on your blue and gold as opening day kicks off the brewer season. You've been waiting all winter. You know, that terrible, terrible winter. Hey, run for president. The student association elections are coming up, but are students even participating? It's been a rough, been a rough 15 seconds. <laughs> Let's go, Badgers! All that and more coming up on Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. Good evening. Well, it was a wild weekend, to say the least. In less than 48 hours, Badger fans went from elation to dejection. With two, with one, Dillis up, missed it, and the Wisconsin Badgers have made it to Monday night. It started with one of the biggest wins in state basketball history. Two nights later, it ended Reality in heartbreak. Setting it with three seconds, is going to run out of time, and the Blue Devils are the national champions of 2015. We have complete coverage of the Bashers' national championship run. We'll start with the jubilation. To get to the national championship game, the Badgers faced a familiar foe. Kentucky knocked out the Badgers by one point last year, and this year, they're a perfect 38 no. After the game, they were 38 and done. The Badgers knocked off the perfect team with Frank Kaminsky leading all scorers. It was a perfect birthday for the seven foot center. Mid post right, turns up, in, going glass. You talk about good on good. That's exceptional on exceptional. They'll play for the national championship. Hey, who birthday is it? 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 Hey, birthday is it? National TV. Everybody up and Otto, you, you're on. Hey, That's guys, what is that? Players got a hero's welcome back at their hotel in Indianapolis, and as Thomas Keller reports, their heroes are Madison too. Badger fans in Madison were ready for the big win. Go Bucky! Yeah! Even the smallest ones. Go Bucky! Dennis Mistriotti believed that the Badgers will come out on top. I think they'll have a chip on their shoulder yeah. for sure. Yeah, I Kentucky. would put my money on the Badgers yeah. winning this one. Yeah. yeah. Fans waited in line all across Madison for the game, but that didn't dampen their enthusiasm. For the second year in a row, the Badgers faced Kentucky. The game and the excitement went back and forth. The Badgers won 71 to 64, knocking out the undefeated Wildcats. After the game, hundreds of fans spilled out onto the streets for a wild night of celebration. In Madison, I'm Thomas Kelly for Panther Vision. The fans were orderly in Madison. Police say there were no arrests after the Kentucky game. But the same can't be said for fans in Kentucky. Riots, looting, and fires broke out in Lexington after the game. Police and riot gear used tear gas to control the unruly crowd and street sweepers were used to clear fans just after 2 a.m. 31 people were arrested. Police say they will face charges including public intoxication and disorderly conduct. Two nights later, the Badgers played in the national championship game for the first time in 74 years. Their opponent, the Duke Blue Devils and legendary coach Mike Krzyzewski. The game was tied at halftime, but the Badgers came out strong in the second half. At one time, they had a nine point lead. Across the state, fans were on the edge of their seats. And as I found out, nowhere was that more evident than in Madison. Excitement spread far and wide at the UW-Madison campus. As the anxious but enthusiastic atmosphere of a championship pregame built up amongst fans. The students were certainly passionate about their home team. Who's going to win tonight? Badgers! The drinks began to flow as the game kicked off and students filled the union. Shannon Hall 
which holds nearly 1,300 people, was host to the deafening cheers of Badger fans. Just like any Badger game in Madison, many crazy characters were in attendance. It wasn't all fun and games, though. As the contest neared the end, students could feel the championship title slipping through their hands. Utter deflation filled the room as the clock ran down to zero. The Badgers had made it to the final for the first time since 1941 and lost to five-time champions, Duke. The Union emptied, but the students weren't done yet. Despite the loss, Badger fans kept their team spirit high. Many students were broken hearted. I'm very bitter. I am better. I'm better. I'm very better. But in the end, the mood was rather bittersweet. Something to look forward to next year. Seriously, we do. We do. Hey, always keep your head up. Positive outlook, right? Proud of all the teams that made it in the tournament. So uh, we still beat Kentucky! In Madison, I'm Tyler Krieger for Panther Vision. Five people were arrested on State Street following the Badgers' loss to Duke. The arrests were in various forms of disruptive behavior. Although the crowd was mostly peaceful, police say there were at least two fires involving clothing and toilet paper. Things were quiet on the streets of Milwaukee, but not in the bars. And at UWM, Panther fans put on their red and white to cheer for the Badgers. Panther Vision's Helen Koth has that part of our coverage. Supporting their state, UWM students packed into the Sandberg Flicks room and the guest house to cheer on the red and white. And red and white was what they wore. Not only do they share a state with the Badgers, the UWM crowd roared just as loud as them too. Monday night proved that UWM students know their sports and their players. Search and rescue! Sail and with both locations serving food and drink, the UWM campus was definitely the place to be. <laughs> Milwaukee students cheered hard as they watched the Madison team play hard. In the end, it was a devastating loss of only five points, and Milwaukee fans didn't take it well. They may not have won a national championship. Hey, we got it here since 1941. No complaints, okay? That's World War II. That was a long time ago. <laughs> we got next. Let's go Badgers. He's in love. Wisconsin. But they did make their fans proud and prove that Wisconsin is a force to be reckoned with. In Milwaukee, I'm Helen Coe for Panther Vision. The guest house didn't have an open chair all night. The Badgers ended the season with a 36-4 and record. UW Oshkosh said it's getting rid of some athletic programs to save the school money. This is in response to the proposed state budget cuts, which would slash funding for the UW system. The programs being cut are track, cross country, men's soccer, and tennis. Two coaches will also be let go. The cuts would go into effect in 2016. UWM is now offering buyouts as an attempt to deal with the impending budget crisis. The chancellor announced the buyouts on Saturday. The university off is offering 50% of the base salary to those 57 years old and up with at least 30 years of experience. UW Oshkosh and UW Green Bay announced similar buyouts last week. UW Eau Claire and Superior were the first to announce buyout proposals. UW System President Ray Cross says he's working to make the system more focused and accountable to taxpayers and lawmakers. He spoke at the UW Board of Regents meeting last week in Waukesha. Holding us accountable drives our cost and the time to degree, which drives down student cost. So again, let me stress that flexibility without accountability cannot endure. Cross offered to lawmakers data which tracks student graduation and retention rates, the school's affordability and satisfaction among alumni. Meanwhile, UW System Regents have approved raising tuition for out-of-state students at most of the system's four-year schools. 
the board voted on the proposal Friday. Starting next year, tuition is expected to go up by hundreds of dollars for non-resident students at nine of the 13 four-year universities. At UW-Madison, tuition for out-of-state undergrads and graduate students could increase by thousands by 2016. A protest against Governor Walker's budget cuts never panned out at UWM. A wet and rainy Spades Plaza was supposed to be the site of the protest on Wednesday. It was organized by UWM's Progressive Students of Milwaukee group. We're told the protest has been rescheduled for Thursday, April 16th at noon. Coming up next on Panther Vision, student association candidates are making their case. And, M and MATC prepares students for the weather using more than just umbrellas. All that and more when Panther Vision continues. Surgeon General issued this warning because smoking causes lung cancer. The Surgeon General issued this warning because radon can cause lung cancer. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. A strong, productive workforce. Building one requires proper education and training, not just for today, but for tomorrow. That's why for the last 100 years, thousands of successful workers wearing hats like these began their careers with this one hat. Polls open this week to decide who will be UWM's next student association president. Candidates have been active on campus, making one last push to win over voters. Panther Vision's Alexander Shun reports. One second. I want to represent each and every one of you. When there's a lack of interest in student government, running for student association president can be difficult. Hey, run for president. Run for president. No? All right. It's been a rough, been a rough 15 seconds. <laughs> we can't advocate for your best interests if we don't, if we don't know who you are and if you don't know who we are. Yeah, that's something we've been working on this year. Only 1% of students voted in the last election. Candidates see that, among many other things, as a major problem. We can't get student imp proper student input if, if we're not hearing from them all year round. So one of the major uh, tenets of my platform is to change that culture. A third of our student population is student parking, or, or commuter students. So having accessible parking for them is important. We need to make a more accessible online presence. Right now, there's no real good way to, from when you're at home, or when you're online to access us and really figure out how you can submit questions or comments and that needs to be an easier way to do that. All candidates issues. offered That's resolutions um, to such problems. What grade level are you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, all believe that they are the best fit for the job. I realize there are a lot of other problems that I really want to help address and especially as a team, as a university as a whole, unite those student leaders, unite those students to move forward together. I'm going to address you every step of the way because if we're not keeping in touch, then there's no way that we can work together to bring about the changes that we seek. And that's ultimately what we have to do. It's been 12 years since a student association president was reelected, so it's exciting um, that we really have a student government that's working again. It is now up to UWM students to vote and decide who will take the position of student association president. In Milwaukee, I'm Alexander Shun for Panther Vision. Students can cast their vote online starting tomorrow. Polls close on the 17th, and that's when the new Student Association president will be announced. The search for the next College of Health Sciences dean is down to two. Jeffrey Joyce is the vice president of research at Kansas City University. 
and Mitchell Whaley is the Dean of the College of Sciences and Technology at Ball State University. They will both be on campus next week for interviews and public forums. UWM physicists are spearheading a new project they hope will resolve one of the last lingering questions in Einstein's theory of relativity. The scientists will be searching the stars for signs of gravitational waves, ripples in space ca time caused by massive cosmic events like the Big Bang. The project, which involves six, more than 60 researchers from 11 institutions, will use some of the most advanced equipment on the planet. The team recently won a $14 million grant from the National Science Foundation. April showers can bring May flowers, but they can also bring the threat of thunderstorms, tornadoes, and other severe weather. Daniel Fisher learns more about how students can stay safe downtown in tonight's MATC report. Spring is finally here, and with it comes the possibility of poor weather. The National Weather Service has declared that today is the beginning of Wisconsin's Severe Weather Awareness Week. To coincide with this, MNTC's Public Safety Department is instituting a series of severe weather drills. Sherry Olszewski was instrumental in putting these drills in place. We generally try to coordinate that, this, type, this drill at the time of year when the state is practicing for severe weather, specifically tornadoes and strong winds. Wisconsin is no stranger to this type of weather. The state receives, on average, 29 severe thunderstorm warnings per year from the National Weather Service in Wisconsin. In 2014 alone, the state was hit by 22 tornadoes, 18 of which occurred in the month of June. Students and faculty alike shared a concern about the severe weather in the state. Pretty concerned. I mean, I'm afraid of tornadoes. Oh, I'm very concerned, uh, especially with what took place last night and over in Illinois and parts of Wisconsin. But differed in their knowledge of where to go in the event of an emergency. I wouldn't know where to go in severe weather. Something happens, you go to your area that you're in, uh, to a safe, secluded area. Evacuation plan signs can be found in all of the METC campuses. Alternatively, students can go to the My METC portal for more information about the drills. It will list the, the dates and times. It will list the procedures. Give us a call at 414-297-6588. That number is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Drills will be held every day this week until Thursday. From METC Panther Vision, this is Daniel Fisher signing off. Luis De Leon joins us with a look at our weather. Thanks, how are you guys doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. You know, with springtime comes a lot of that rain, a lot of that severe weather. You know, last week we saw some storms, but I don't think we're going to see much severe weather this week, which is always a good sign, you know? Beautiful week of weather. I mean, summer is coming, so I'm okay with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can deal with rain as long as it's not snow. Yeah, of course, definitely. As we go to our weather headlines, we're going to see one warm week as the warm-up trend will occur throughout the state, making that spring weather much more apparent. For today and much of the week, we are going to see a chance for some light showers, but mainly just a slight chance here or there, but for the most part, a very dry week. As for the winds, also playing a role in the warm weather with winds light and variable, so not too windy as well, which is always great to hear. For your current conditions, currently here in Milwaukee, mostly cloudy skies with that temperature right now at 58 degrees and a dew point of 34 as those showers and drizzles are just exiting the area. For the rest of today, as those clouds are going to dissipate along with the rain, we're going to see mostly uh, uh, about partly cloudy skies right now with, uh, with a temperature high at 62 degrees and the precipitation chance at 30%, so mainly just for like a stray shower or anything like that. For the lows across the state, we are seeing a lot of the same temperatures in the upper 30s, maybe just touching 40. Starting up north in Rylander, pulling off that low of 36. Down in Green Bay, 40. Oshkosh, 39. Here in Milwaukee, 42. Out in the Madison area, 39. In Eau Claire, 38. And La Crosse, 40. As for the highs, a very warm day across the state. Even up north in Rylander, just touching 60 with that temperature at 59 right now. In the Green Bay area, Green Bay area both in Oshkosh as well, 62 degrees. Down here in Milwaukee, 62. In the Madison area, 64 and La Crosse 65, out west in Eau Claire 64. As for tonight, as those clouds move away, we're going to see clear skies with a low of 41. Wind's going to be calm coming out of the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. As for tomorrow, a very nice day. Sunny skies with a temperature high at 61 degrees. Calm winds again coming out of the south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So a wonderful day to get outside. This whole week's going to be a wonderful week. As for Wednesday, another nice day. Partly cloudy skies with a temperature high of 55 degrees. So that temperature dropping just a little bit. Winds coming out of the west at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so nothing too, nothing too windy, no blustery winds or anything like that from the lake, so it should be a great week so far. As for your extended forecast, we're going to see the rest of the week going to be warm. Thursday, cloudy skies with a high of 63. Friday, once again, maybe even hitting 70, but with a high of 68. Possibly going to see some precipitation that day as well, but nothing to be concerned with. As we move into your weekend, Saturday is looking great with sunny skies and a high of 61. And Sunday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 55. 
So a wonderful chance to get on down to the lake, do anything outdoors, you know, go for a run, go into the woods, anything it's like perfect that. Perfect tailgating weather for oh, the that, brewers. Definitely. Oh, Glad yeah. the warm weather's back. I'm that brutal cold in Milwaukee, <laughs> that Milwaukee wind awful. I'm glad the wind's not gonna be back. Yeah, no, Just definitely. Time. <laughs> of course. UWM Panther Vision reporters are being honored as Best in the Midwest by two different journalism organizations. Panther Vision reporters won three regional Mark of Excellence awards from the Society of Professional Journalists. Panther Vision won for Best Series, General Reporting, and In-Depth Reporting. The competition was open to students in four states. Panther Vision also won three awards from the Midwest Broadcast Journalists Association, which represents six states. The awards were given out over the weekend at the Midwest Journalism Conference in Minneapolis. Coming up, find out why some students are trading in their books for broth. Plus, more on the Badgers duking out in Indianapolis. All that and more when Panther Vision returns. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Student Aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Sooner or later, you're going to have to start. Oh, it won't be easy at first. It'll take time, dedication, and commitment. It will be the most important thing you'll ever do. Yes, sooner or later, we'll all have to start. So, what are you waiting for? Saving for your financial future is easier than you think. Get started and choose to save. It will pay off in the long run. When international disaster strikes, only one type of donation can purchase clean water, get medical supplies, rebuild homes and businesses, and provide culturally appropriate foods. This one donation gives exactly what is needed for each unique disaster situation. Save lives. Save time. Donate cash. The awards are piling up for Badger big man Frank Kaminsky. And UWM baseball has a banner week. Rachel Meidel has it all in sports. Rachel? Thanks, Tyler and Eliana. As we told you at the top of our newscast, it was a wild weekend for Badger fans. It started with the Badgers getting their revenge on the Kentucky Wildcats after losing to them last year in the Final Four. Frank the Tank Kaminsky led the game with 20 points and 11 rebounds. He won all five Player of the Year awards this season. Junior Sam Decker added 16 points and hit the game-clinching three. The 71-64 win put the Badgers into the NCAA championship game. It was Wisconsin's first trip to the national championship game since 1941. The Badgers' title hopes came to an end with a 68-63 loss to Duke. The game went into halftime tied at 31. The Badgers went on a six-point run to put them ahead but with nine with 15 minutes to go. Duke freshman Tyus Jones hit a three-pointer to put Duke ahead with one in just over four minutes to go. Jones led the game with 23 points and was named Most Outstanding Player. For Kaminsky, it was the final game of his college career. These guys career. are my family, and I mean that literally. I don't mean that hypothetically. Um, I've never been closer to a group of guys in my entire life. Um, from the coaching staff on down to every single player on this team. Um, it's just going to be hard to say goodbye. It was Duke's fifth national title. For the first time in Panthers history, Panthers baseball pulled off a no-hitter. It came last week against UW Superior's Yellow Jackets. Freshman Alex McIntosh pitched the first seven innings on short notice. He struck out 11 batters and walked one in his 93 pitches. Senior Mike Schneider closed out the game. It's first time since he's taken the mound since injuring his elbow back in 2003. The Panthers won seven to nothing. Building momentum on their first no-hitter, the Panthers upset number 15, Iowa. It was their first victory in a nationally ranked opponent since 2009. Yeah, we did a good job. We 
um, it was going to be one of those midweeks where you break up the game and you get seven or eight pitchers in it. And, um, you know, other than one inning. Junior Leak Meteor had the game-winning hit in the eighth to go along with his first three hits and two runs. Senior Cody Peterson locked down the game with his save in the ninth. Panthers haven't allowed an earned run in 18 innings. The UWM track team has two more runners of the week. Sophomore Kate Novacek and senior Jordan Schmidt are being honored for their performance in the Big Blue Classic. Schmidt dominated the 400-meter hurdles with a time of 52.36 seconds, and Novacek placed second in the 400-meter dash with a time of 55.86 seconds. That's all for sports. Back to you, Elian and Tyler. Thanks, Rachel. Skipping class tempts many UWM students daily, but it's even harder to resist on Brewers opening day. And some students chose brats over books as the team kicked off their season. Panther Vision's Tanner Bacala takes us to the tailgates at Miller Park. Beer, brats, brewers. <laughs> Hours before the first pitch, cars pour into Miller Park for the Brewers' home opener against the Colorado Rockies. For fans like UWM student Derek Rapavi, tailgating is an all-day event. Got here about 10 o'clock. Yeah, about an hour ago. Oh! oh cool. yes! Like you've been waiting all winter, you know, that terrible, terrible winter for this day and then just the rest of the season. And with that, missing class for today's game doesn't weigh heavy on Derek's mind. Uh, no, it's all right. I mean, um, lectures, so, you know, slides are posted on D2L, so we're good. Hey, that's game! <laughs> Physical therapy major Zach Heipel serves as grill master despite some minor setbacks. We didn't bring utensils, we didn't bring like a spatula or anything. This is how a real turn is to it. I've got four brats ready. Here you go, eat it. We'll be good. <laughs> you get this masterpiece already? MKE. Italian sausage stuffed chicken breast. What are you doing? You're going to eat the whole thing with one bite. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the food and drink comes with a price. I have to pee so bad right now. With the, see that line over there? It's crazy. But long lines show no signs of dampening these fan spirits. Happy opening day! In Milwaukee, I'm Tanner Bacala for Panther Vision. Derek and his friends plan to try to make it to at least 20 games this season. UWM students looking to catch a game can score $9 reserve seats at every Friday home game. Thank you for tuning in for tonight's edition of Panther Vision. You can watch us on Time Warner Channel 14 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99 at 5.30 on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and again at 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Have a great week.